أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبع ملته إلى يوم الدين وضعت We thank Allah, we beseech his mercies and blessings upon the noble prophet Muhammad his household, his companions and the entirety of the Muslims Today in our class, we'll be discussing مقدماتٌ في علمي النحو والصرف The preliminaries and introductions to the sciences of Nah and Sarf Insha'Allah, we'll look at the generality of the concept of Nah and Sarf In this our class, since it is our first class We have the organogram, the chart here shows the main difference between nah and sof as you can see this is a nah this is a sof what is nah nah in arabic language means grammar grammar if i say someone is a nahwi means the person is a grammarian so a sof means a particular type of wordings that are exposed to change these wordings could be verbs and they could be noun they could be verbs and they could be nouns now let's take a look at nah and how it splits we have two subdivisions for nah the first one is al irab and the second is al bina these two subdivisions of nah Al-I'rab and the second is Al-Bina. First of all, what is Al-I'rab? This type of subdivision of Nah focuses on the type of wordings in Nahu that are exposed to change, that are subjected to change, that could be changed. What are we saying here? There are some words in Arabic language in which the last letter of those words can change from fatha to kasra to dhamma and the likes and even sukun so this type of word in which the last letter can be changed from one haraka to the other or even from haraka to sukun is called al mu'rab that is a word that can change a word that is subject to change so that is al i'rab the ability for a word to be subjected to change okay the second division is albina what is albina albina is just the opposite of al -i'rab. albina is the ability of a word to remain the same that is structured it doesn't change regardless of the position it is in a sentence so albina is when the last letter of a word does not change, that is, when it remains the same. Al-Irab is when the last letter of a word in Nahu, in Arabic, changes as a result of something that comes before it. Lidukhul al-Awamil, as a result of some factors. So a factor could make it to become Fatha, I mean the last letter. Another factor could make it to become Kasra, and another factor could make the last letter to become Dhamma, as the case may be. Now let's look into al irab in its proper sense. al irab we have two subdivisions for al irab too. We have most of the words in al nahu that are subject to change, they fall under Murzumul Asma. Most of them are, majority of them are names. Names, especially uh, most of them are changeable that is the last letter of names in Arabic lang language can be changed for instance we have many names let's take for instance we have uh, let's say Tajib. Tajibun, for example is a name Tajibun. if we look at the word Tajibun, we will see that the last letter of the word Tajibun, Tajibun. Tajibun. We will see that the last letter of the word Tajibun remains Dhamma Tad, Dhamma. That Dhamma means Rafa. 
So it can be in a sentence where the donor changes to casserole. And it can be in another sentence where the casserole changes to donna. Inshallah, when we get there, we'll be explaining them in details. But what we are saying, Al-Arab comes into, as in, in most cases, mostly, it comes to play in names, especially, where the last letter of those names change from Fatha to Donna, from Donna to Kasra, and sometimes, but in names, especially, we can see that names, especially, they can only change from Rafun. Rafun means Adonna. So Rafun is the hal, the state at which the word is, or the name is, but the particular uh, haraka it has is Dhamma. Haraka means vowel. So Dhamma, Nasbu means Fatha. So name can possess Fatha. The last letter of a name can possess Fatha. The last letter of a name can possess Dhamma, as the case of Rafur, and as the case in the state of al jar it will be Kasra. So, in the general sense, we can deduce here that names that are subject to change can possess three things at the last letter of their words. One of them is Abdomma in the state of Rafur. The second is Al-Fatha in the state of al nas And the last one is al jar which is the state, al jar is the state, and the Haraka it has is al kasra So that is name. Now, in al irab the wordings of the nouns, that's of the words, let's put it like that, words that are subject to change can also be in the tenses too. Here, we were talking about names. But here, let's go to tenses. Like, Al-Fi'l al mudari Fi'l al mudari is present tense. Al-Fi'l al mudari can be given or can be said to be a, a tense that is occurring right now, present tense, as we've said. Or we can say al Fi'lul mustaqbal, a tense that is yet to occur, a tense that will occur in the future, that is mustaqbal. So, now, al fi'lul mudari, alladhi lam yattasil binuni at-tawqid. The fi'lul mudari, that is the present tense or the future tense, that does not connect with the two nuns of tawqid, the noon of Tawqid, what is noon Tawqid? It is the noon that we use in affirming a particular thing, in affirming a statement. For example, the two nuns we have one we call, first of, of the two noon, we call one noon of Tawqid al Khafifa, we call the other one noon Tawqidi as Taqila. Now, when we have uh, Al Mudari and this sense that does not connect with this noon that we are talking about these two nouns noon in niswa and it does not connect with noon that we use in identifying uh feminine many feminine many females okay many feminine words so if it does not connect with that noon as well we the particular tense which is present tense will also be subject to change will be changeable as well, as we explained in the names here. And in the case of uh, verb, you know, we are talking about tense. Tense has to do with verb, action word, as regards to time, past, present, and future. So in the case of tense here, it's different from, you know, the state at which we have in the names, we have three states, al-rafr, al-nasbu, al-jarru. But in the states here, we have three states as well, but they are common in two. The two states which are common are al-rafr and al-nasbu. Why the last one is al-jazmu? The last one, the last one here, which is al-jazmu, is for al-fi'l al mudari Why al-jazmu does not exist in asma, in names, but it exists in verb, especially in al mudari al mudari where we are explaining now al-fi'l al mudari that is present tense or future tense. Now, 
So when al mudari for instance, if we have yaf'alu, 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 at this stage, a rough room, it will have dhamma, as we can see here. But if it is a nasbu, it will have fatha, something, a factor, we come to play here, we come before it and it changes the land to fatha. So al jazmu, a factor, we also come before this verb that will change the land to sukun. So these are the states at which this present or future tense could uh, receive, and that is al iraq the ability of a word to the subject to change or to be subjected to change. Now, that is one of the subdivisions of Nah. The other division is Al-Bina. Al-Bina, as I've explained earlier, it is where the word is structured. It is not subject to change. It is not changeable. It remains the same regardless of the position the word is in a sentence. Now, let's take for instance, in Al-Bina, it is also subdivided into two. One of them is Al-Lazim. Al-Bina'u Al-Lazim. And the other one is Al-Bina'u Al-Arid. What is the difference here? You will see we have we cited some examples under Al-Bina'u Al-Lazim. The first one is Ba'dul Asma. There are some names what is lazim? Before we explain all the four items here. A lazim is something that is necessary or that is compulsory. On al-bina. On the words which we explain that they do not change. They do not change. They are structured. Regardless of the position they have. Whether they are in the state of rofru. Or the state of uh, al nasbu Or the state of al jarru They do not change. They do not change. Now, in some of the names... That we have, you know, when we get to each one of them, we have a elaborate and detailed explanation on them. The Isn Allah Ta'ala. But let's quickly talk about Bagul Asma. There are some names which are initially, originally, they are Al Bina. What are those names? We have Abdomail. Abdomail pronouns generally in Arabic language. You know, we have two forms of Domail, two notable forms of Domail. We have Abdomail. Al Mutasila and we have Abdomail Al Mufasila. Now Domail al Mutasila are those connective pronouns. Why Domail al Mufasila are those pronouns that stay on their own? They can stand alone. The connective one are, are also al bina. They are structured. They remain the same in a sentence. The one that are standing on their own, they are also structured. They remain the same. Example, we have Hua, we have Anta, we have here. They are examples of Adama'irul Mufasila. Example of Adama'irul Mutasila are the, the Domir, they are the Domir that connect with uh, verbs in most cases. For example, we have Dorobeta, Dorobeti, Dorobetum. Those Domir that we have at the end of the, of, uh, the verb, Filunavi, the past tense. They are Domirul Mutasila because they connect with the verb. Now, they are also Al Bina. They are Magnish. They are structured and they remain the same. They do not change. They do not change. So, this is, these are the examples of, like Tamair, like I've explained, we have Asma ul Ishara. Asma ul Ishara, like Dhani. Eh? We have Dha. We have Dhihi. We have Tani. We, so they are also examples of albina that do not change. They remain the same wherever they are in a sentence. And ex another example is Allah Alladhani, Alladhina, Allati, Allatani, Al Asma'u, Al Mausula. They are also examples of those names that Allah's and they are compulsory, that they are structured and they do not change wherever they find themselves in a sentence. Now another a uh, thing which does not change, which remains the same wherever it is in a sentence, is al fail al madi al fail al madi is past tense. Past tense is a verb. Past tense. Past tense, for example, we have fa'ala. Fa'ala. Wherever we use a tense, 
that's the la the in, in in three pillars like this far a pillar another pillar in three pillars and the last letter is fatha and which we use to connote past tense in fact in nahu it is not niche it is structure it doesn't change for example if i say jalasa isat akala ihet you can see that the all the examples I cited, the last letter of those words, uh, as in the hand, the last letter had as fatha. So if we want to do the irab, we say final madin madnijun al al fatha. So what are we saying here? All al afal al nadiya, all the past tense, all past tenses, generally they are al madnija, al madnija, al madnijat. Okay, now we have filul am. Filul am means a tense which we use as command. For example, Igilis, Ivhab, Kul, Isma. You will discover or deduce that the examples I've just mentioned now, they end with a sukun. In that case too, any tenses that we, we use to connote a command is also, or they are also magnijet. They are structured and they do not change. They remain the same wherever they are in a sentence. Kullul huruf, all prepositions, they are magnijet. They are structured and they do not change. Examples of them, we have ala, we have ila, we have fi, we have min, we have, you know, we have kaf. We have lamb, we have bar, all prepositions generally, they are structured and they do not change. And they are compulsory. Now, this one, al-arid, what are we saying? Al-arid means the one that just come up. Al-arid, it comes up. It's not that in the, in the true sense that it is, it is structured or do, do, does not change. It does change, but it comes up as a result of something. So, for example, there are some words too that they don't change. Under Bible Asma, under Al Ari, those ones that come up. So, for example, Kabila, they are Zuruf, Barada, Duna. So, most cases, they remain Fatha like this because they are Mabnish. They are structured and they do not change. But it is not that they cannot have Kasra in case. Uh, some other principles come to play which we are going to explain in details when we get there bi'iznillahi ta'ala also al-mudari' al-muttasil binuni at-tawkidi al-mudari' al-muttasil binuni al-niswa the mudari the present tense or future tense that, that connect with the two nuns that I explained earlier tawkidu al-saqila wa nun tawkidi al-khufifa the one that is heavy and the one that is light. So if any field of Mubari connect with each of these nuns, then that particular Mubari becomes al madnish It becomes a structured one. It doesn't change. For example, if I say, Yaktuban, Yaktuban, you know, Yaktuban, I've added nun tawkid al khafifa where, whereby the last letter of the Mubari is actually ba, but the nun tawkid al khafifa, which as sukun is an is a connective letter. So in that case, wherever I want to use any nun tawkid, whether the sakila or the khafifa, the last letter of the mabari will continue to be fatha, like yaktubanna, that is sakila, yafalanna, yasmaan. So in that case, the last letter of the al mudarir will become Fatha and it, it's be, and it is as a result of the Noon Tawqid that comes to play therein. Either Thaqila, the heavy one, or Khafifa, or the light one. Another one under al arid the one that comes up, that show up, is al mudarir al matasil bin Noon Niswa. The modern that connects with the noon of the feminine, the noon of the feminine. So, for example, if I say the ladies did not eat, 
the ladies did not eat. I will say, Aula il Aula in Nisa, or Aula in Nisa, the ladies did not eat. Aula is among the Asma ul Ishara, or let me not use Aula, the ladies in general. Let's say, An Nisa u lem yakul, An Nisa u lem yakul, the ladies did not eat. If you look at Lam Yakul, 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 Lam Yakulna, we will see that the last letter, which is the noon of that indicates the feminine, has Fatha. And it is the one that makes this Lam, which is ordinarily Donma, if anything does not connect with it, but because of the connection of the noon and uh, Niswa, it has made it to become sukun, and in that case, wherever al mudari connects with noon of the feminine, the, the last letter of the mudari will become, will become sukun, and it will be al nabnish It becomes structured, and it doesn't change wherever this comes to play. Wherever, wherever this noon comes to play, when it when it connects with the end of the mudari, the last letter of the mudari. So these are al bina. The structure, they do not change wherever they find themselves in a sentence. And they are they could be the one that are compulsory, necessary, and the one that come that show up as a result of one thing or the other. That is the editorial structure of al nahu al irab the one that are changeable, al bina the one that are structural, that they do not change. Now let's come to asaf. Asafu can just be subdivided into two. We have al asma ul mu'raba wal af'al ul mutasarrifa. What is asaf? Like I said earlier, safu is something that can change. Asafu means a change in its real sense. But what what change happens in saf? Where what are we changing? So we change al asma, the names al mu'raba that are changeable. Al Asma ul Mu'raba, names that are changing. For, for example, if I say, uh, if I say, um, for example, let's say Abdun, Abdun, the, uh, a servant, Abdun. If I want to make the servant to become two, I will say Abdani. You see, that's changed by adding Alif and Nun to the end of Dal. So if I want to make it to be, to be many, I will say, uh, I will say, uh, uh, Abdun, I, I, can, I can say, Abidun, Aw Ibadun, Abidun, Aw Ibadun. Can you see that? So, we have changed it from being singular to dual, then to plural. Now, that is Al Asma Ul Mu'raba, those names that can be changed. So, Sof can be subdivided into Al Asma Ul Mu'raba, changeable names. Now, and it's the other subdivision is al afalu al mutasarrifa the tenses the verbs that are flexible that are changeable the verbs that are flexible and changeable so al afalu al mutasarrifa uh, for example we have al fail al madi we have al fail al madari we have fail al amr and the likes like that so this is the preliminaries or introduction of the concept of nah and so inshallah in our next class, we begin with the definition of Nahu and um, we give a detailed explanation of that. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.